Superbase is a backend as a service platform that will allow us to build a backend for our applications using Postgres as a database. And for each database table we create, Superbase is going to automatically generate a RESTful API for us. There are some other features provided by this platform, such as row level security for our database tables. We are going to see how to create this kind of security policies in a few minutes. We can also authenticate our users using multiple social OAuth providers, and we'll create a bucket to store files for any static assets for our applications. Superbase is going to release serverless functions before the end of 2021. And Superbase functions are pretty similar to other services such as AWS Lambda or Cloud Functions for Firebase. Let's take a quick look at the pricing. There are three plans, free, pro, and pay as you go. The three plans provide a dedicated Postgres database, unlimited API requests, and real-time functionality. The database space for the free plan is up to 500 megabytes. For the pro plan, the database space is up to 8 gigabytes. And for the pay-as-you-go plan, you pay around 12 cents per gigabyte. Okay, let's take a look at the users. We can have up to 10,000 users in the free plan, up to 100,000 users in the pro plan, and we have unlimited users for the pay-as-you-go plan. For the three plans, we get social OAuth providers and a custom SMTP server. And regarding the object storage, we get up to one gigabyte for the free plan, up to 100 gigabytes for the pro plan, and around two cents per gigabyte for the pay as well plan. So those are the most important features for the three plans. Okay, let's create a new project using Supervise. So I'm going to click here on start your project. Here we need to log in using GitHub. So I'm going to click on continue with GitHub. And I'm going to authorize Supervise to access my GitHub account. So I'm going to click on authorize Supervise. Here I already created an organization that is Pragmatic Reviews. And here I'm going to create a new project. So I'm going to click on new project here, this button, and I'm going to select my organization. Okay, I'm going to call this project Bookstore, and I'm going to set a password for the database. And I'm going to click on create new project. Superbase is going to provision our database and API endpoints. So let's give it a few minutes to generate the project. Okay, our project has been generated. So let's take a quick look at the different areas of the Superbase administration panel. We have the home with these sections, database out storage. Superbase generated for us the project API keys. Here we have the public API key that we're going to use in the API. We're going to see that in a few minutes. We have some other configurations such as the such as the URL and the shadeability secret. And here we have some example projects and some other documentation to integrate this project, for example, with a, a front application. And here we have the table editor. From here, we can create new tables. We're going to do that in a minute. Here we have the authentication section where we can create different users. We can create policies. And here we have some other settings. Here we have the storage area where we can create new buckets. This is pretty similar to an S3 bucket where we can put files there. Okay, here is the SQL section where we have templates to run different scripts in our database to perform some common tasks, such as creating tables, adding columns, etc. Here is the database section where we have tables, we have roles, we have extensions, replication, we have settings for our backups, connection pooling, and some other functions, such as triggers, database functions, functions that are like the store procedures, and function hooks. Okay, and here we have reports to create custom reports for our projects. We have an API section. We're gonna see that in a few minutes. When we create tables, we are gonna get one API per table that we create. And here we have the setting sections with different areas. General, database, API, out settings. And here from the out settings, we can set, for example, external auth providers. We can select Apple, Azure, Bitbucket, Discord, Facebook, GitHub, GitLab, Google, Twitch, and Twitter. Okay, and now let's go to the table editor and let's create our first table in Supervise. Okay, let's create a new table. I'm going to call it Books. Here we can select to enable role level security. We are going to do that later. So I'm going to keep this option unchecked. And Supervise already provides these three columns for us, ID, created, add, and updated, add. 
I'm going to keep those columns and I'm going to add a new column that will be the title of the book. And the type of the title will be a bar char. And I'm going to click on save. Okay, our books table has been successfully created. So I'm going to insert a new row in the table. The ID will be automatically generated. The same for the created ad and updated ad fields. So I'm going to set the title. Let's say clean code. I'm going to save this new row. Okay, here we have our first row in the database. And now if we go to the API section here, we're going to see that we're going to have an API generated by Zappabase for our books table. And here on the right hand side, we can see how to interact with the API generated by Zappabase. Here we have some examples on how to interact with the API using the Zappabase library for JavaScript. And if we click on bash, we're going to see the different CRL or curl commands to call the different API endpoints. For example, here we have the command to select all rows. We need to pass two headers, the API key and an authorization token. That is a bitter token. And here we need to select an on key. This is the public key that we need to pass if we want to use, for example, Postman. So I'm going to copy this curl command and I'm going to import this command here into Postman. I'm going to click on import. I'm going to select raw text. I'm going to paste that curl command here. I'm going to click on continue and I'm going to click on import. And here we have the URL. We have to get, that is the HTTP verb to get the existing books. And here we have the two headers, the API key and the authorization header with the viewer token. And this select, we can remove it. I'm going to click on send. As we can see here, we get the record that we inserted into the database. But if we use that select, um, we can select, for example, the title. So if I enter the title, if I click on send, and here we get an object with just the title. I can add, for example, the ID, ID and title. I click on send and I receive as part of the response, the ID and the title of the record. Okay, now let's insert a new record. So I'm going to copy the URL from here. I'm going to paste it here. This will be a post HTTP request. I'm going to pass the same headers. So I'm going to copy those headers from the get operation. This is API key. And this is authorization and I'm going to paste the value from here. And here's the body you can pass a form URL encoded. And here I'm just going to pass the title. This new title that I'm going to insert in the database will be refactoring to patterns. Let's run this post request and we get a 201 created and if we execute the get and put again. We should see the two records. I'm going to remove this select. And I'm going to click on send. And as we can see here, we have the two records. So this is the record that we inserted using the UI. And this is the record that we just inserted using Postman. Okay, we just run this post endpoint and we created a new book in our books table from Superbase passing this public token. This is a shades of web token. Let's take a look at it using the ShadeWT debugger. I'm going to paste that ShadeWT here. And as we can see here in the payload, we have a role that is unknown, that is like public. So what if we want to restrict the insert operation to only of the dedicated user? If we want to enforce that, we need to go here to the authentication section. We need to go to policies. And we need to create a new role level security policy. First, we need to enable RLS for the books table. I'm going to confirm this. Now let's create our new role level security policy. I'm going to click here on new policy. And I'm going to create a policy from template. I can also create the policy from scratch using SQL. So I'm going to click on create a policy from template. And here I'm going to select this template, enable insert access for authenticated users only, where it's basically going to check that the role is authenticated. So I'm going to click on use this template. And I'm going to click on review. Here is the SQL statement to create the policy. Basically, create policy enable insert for authenticated users only on the books table for insert. And it's going to check that the role is equals to authenticated. I'm going to click on save policy. And in order to test this policy, I need to create a new user. 
example, here I can invite a user by email. I'm going to click on invite user. So here I receive the email. You have been invited to the Supervise application. And here I'm going to click here on this invite to accept it. And as part of the URL, we're going to receive a JSON web token for the user. So I'm going to grab this value. And I'm going to paste it here in the JWT debugger. And here we have different attributes for the user. And we have the role that is authenticated. This is the role that Superbase is going to check for our policy. So now let's go to Postman. And if I run this post request again using the public token, now I'm going to get a 403. Here we have the message. New role violates role level security policy for table books. And now if I change the bidder token and I replace this authorization header with the value of the user token, I'm just going to change this to head for design patterns. We insert a new book in the database with this new title. So now if we run this, we get a 201 created. And if we run the get request, we should see the new record in the database. Yes. Here we have the third record in the database. So we have our role level security policy running in Superbase.